Let the galaxy burn. Hi guys, Skypoint here. Today I wanted to share with you a couple more really satisfying wins I've had as Sevatar on my climb up the ladder. So I had some great battles against uh, especially a Vulcan and then a Nikona Shuriken and then a Durak Rask. So let's go ahead and see how this deck did in these fights. We'll begin with Vulcan. So Scat is a really good player in the game. So coming up to uh, my uh, initial hand, Recon Claw I always love to keep. Knight Sides and Punitive Action are a little too expensive for now. Let's see if I get anything better. A second Recon Claw and Punitive Action came back. I guess that's a hint that I'm going to have to use it during this game. So in turn one, I play Abandoned Supplies just to try and draw a good unit. Endos Shrek comes up, which is not bad. Endos, Endros Shrek, or otherwise known as Endros Shrek. Anyhow, there's some funny memes around him. This is not good. I rely on a lot of stealth units and this guy un uh, unmasks my stealth units. And I do not get a rule of fear to remove him straight away. So I'm going to put Endros Shrek down uh, immediately so that um, he, can't, this, he can't easily get removed. So as expected, he gets unmasked. Vulcan draws a card and he tries to that's it he's not taking four damage to his face right now again I don't have a great card right now so I'm gonna put uh, one recon claw in play and that's it I'll sit on my remaining two energy oh no I've got three units in play so these guys uh, duplicate themselves and go back to his hand I'll be facing a lot of those during this game and he quickly takes out Endros Shrek all right, my turn five comes round, and I still don't have a good card to play. So I use, I just use my ability to lower uh, that guy's attack, and I put my second guy in play to start trying to set up a punitive action. Okay, there comes the next copy of that. I should have realized that I was just going to set myself up for that move. Okay, Knight Sides can't do anything right now, but here's a cunning plan. I drop my Reeker of Kaldak to stop the second Smirnov Warriors from attacking. I give it flank with one of my uh, Recon Claws, and I destroy the first uh, Smirnov's Warrior. Oh wow, Ornithal's Barge. Okay, he's got five units in play, but this is where that punitive action which uh, stuck in my hand came around. Punitive action deals one damage to each enemy per card I have in play. So let's do five, four damage to him. That wipes out almost everything. I use my ability to lower the Ogren's attack to three so that the terror effect from my uh, Reaper of Kaldrak can kick in. He drops another Smyrnal's Warriors, no surprise. And he uses the fantastic Salamander's Ash and Bones tactic to just destroy one of my damaged units, in this case my uh, Reaper of Kaldrak. But I have a plan. Night Sides. The Night Sides get dropped, they get given flank, and they take out the last uh, Smyrnal's Warrior. And now I'm really starting to dominate Vulcan over here, although Vulcan has that incredible survivor skill. Okay, now he brings out Erdrakul, so he destroys anything he attacks. But on the other hand, a lot of my units which he'll be attacking have very high damage, so uh, he's taking damage in return. I'm going to bring down this guy. I know he's going to die, but at least he'll do 5 damage to Vulcan. This attack was pretty pointless by me, because Vulcan will just attack him and his survivor will kick in. And he's dead now. And he do, triggers his reckoning. So Sticky Vulcan is being sticky. Alright. Next he puts down a frontline unit which unmasks one of my hidden guys. And he drops uh, Duke Mortiker. Ugh. That's going to start removing my units. So I play Abandoned Supplies. And I luck out like crazy and get my own Duke Mortiker at a discount which means I can now use Duke Mordecai's energy ability to send his own Duke Mordecai back to his hand. I gave flank to Duke Mordecai with my Recon Claw and did that. And lastly, just to make his attacks less powerful, I use Sevatar's ability to lower his attack. Okay, so he sends Duke Mordecai back to my hand. 
he plays a healing guy. And he plays this really irritating guy who does a lot of damage to my warlord. And he heals himself. But you'll notice that except for this frontline guy, everyone has two or less attack. So it'd be such a real shame if a rule of fear were to come up right now. Well, isn't that a shame? All right. So I'm going to use Sevatar's ability to lower his attack to two and play Rule of Fear now to wipe his board. With five energy left, I bring my own Duke Mordekar back into play. He drops another Smyrnoff Warrior, which copies itself, of course. And he plays Abandoned Supplies. And he plays a Mortar guy. Oh, that's annoying. And he destroys that guy. Now I could probably... Oh, oh, and there goes my flanking guy. I can no longer do any more flanking moves in this game. That's fine. I'm coming up with a plan. If I can get him down to zero health, I can drop Vosk Predator and kill him. The Raven will definitely help with that. Let's sabotage uh, the Mortar Carrier so it cannot drop any more Mortar Shells. And let's bring in Etros. What's his face? And draw myself a couple more cards with Curse of Foresight. Ooh, Mercy and Forgiveness. That's handy, as well as Rule of Fear. Okay, this can work for me. Alright, so all I have to do is get him to zero health, and I can kill him with the Predator. But, he puts a frontline unit down. Unfortunately for him, his frontline unit has two attack or less. And I have Rule of Fear in my hand. So, now comes my finishing move. Yeah. I play Rule of Fear to remove his front line, leaving me with 7 energy. I use my Warlord and my 1 unit on the board to get Vulcan down to 0 health. And then I finish him off and drop the Voss Predator and use its rally damage to kill him. So that was a really great match I thought as uh, Savitar showing uh, a lot of the different capabilities in his deck from uh, punitive action to rule of fear to the rat powerful rally effects and terror. Okay, the next match we're going to look at is not the Horus Lupercal who absolutely dominated me, but we're going to go and take a look at the Nikona Sharikin. This was another really fun match for me. So again, I lucked out. I started with both Recon Claw and Abandoned Supplies. And honestly, that with those two in hand, keeping Voss Predator for later was possible. So I kept my initial hand. I have the initiative. So instead of playing Recon Claw, because I don't seem to have anything to play it with it immediately, I did Abandoned Supplies. And I drew a cheap Curse of Foresight. That's fine. In the next turn, I can play Recon Claw and Curse of Foresight together. So I attack him. He pulls the same move, pulling abandoned supplies. But he doesn't attack me because my attack value is higher. So now I drop my Recon Claw and I attack him and then I also play my Curse of Foresight. Let's give myself a couple more cards. Tactic, Unit, Tactic. Ouch, two points of damage to me. Alright. Attack. Attack, okay. At least my Recon Claw didn't take both hits, otherwise he would have been killed by what he just did. Alright. So I'm going to pull Ectra Trez and heal myself. I'm not going to attack his unit because I'll just take two points, of da three points of damage for that with nothing to show for it. Instead, I'm going to attack him directly because I'm expecting his unit to attack me and die anyway next turn. And the Raven Guard don't get that many buffing cards. Oh, this is powerful. Oh, look at that. He cleared my board. Ouch. Okay. Nothing yet. Let's see if Abandoned Supplies pulls out a good card for me. Eh, Reaper of Kaldrak, but I can't play anything this turn, so I'm letting three energy go to waste. It comes to him and he drops this powerful stealth guy. He has, he's got 5 attack and 4 health. That's really not good. So I'm going to bring in my little healing duke, uh, vehicle to try and prepare for what's about to come to me. And just keep trying to uh, chip him away on his health. Okay, now comes the pain. It's actually extra painful because he pulls off a fantastic move here. Watch this. 
And so now he's got two vehicles with fast or flank, which he uses to destroy my one vehicle. And they both had sneak attacks, so he took no damage in return. And he also heals up his guy, so he's got a really strong board presence here right now. And uh, he's got a fully healed guy. Okay, coming up to seven energy. So the second most dangerous, probably the most dangerous thing in fact, is the scimitar jet bike. So I can drop the predator and use its three damage to destroy the jet bike. And I have to nail uh, that little bike because otherwise it can keep repeatedly attacking me with impunity. Oh, and he drops a uh, mortar carrier. He does go for my vehicle there, so that sort of helped. And okay, he's got double the health that I do. This is not looking good, but I'm starting to have a trick up my sleeve. So first of all, I bring in Endros Shrek, and then I drop Rule of Fear to immediately buff Endros Shrek. So he goes up to six attack. I'm not attacking him anymore because nine health is really small. Youch, and look at that. He goes and he quickly hits me again. He pulls abandoned supplies. Does he drop another unit? Nope, he just goes invisible now. He's going to deal 3 damage in the next turn. From Nikona's special ability. He's got a siege thing. Kind of siege. So I use Rule of Fear first of all to cut those guys down to less than 2 attack. I use Night Sides to uh, destroy them. And now I'm getting close to enough damage on the board to kill him. He reveals my guy over there. He drops some more Dathan. He does his 3 damage over there, but now he's starting to look like he's in trouble. And now comes the finishing move. Watch this. First of all, my technical servitors. That's there just to add a body for what's about to come. Then Duke Mordecai for 5. And lastly, punitive action. So that's 5 damage to everything on the board. And now my uh, Endros check has been super buffed. And I can just finish him off quickly. There we go. Boom. So there, that's me coming back from having like half the health of the other enemy warlord and turning it around to a victory through some of my fancy combos. Alright, and the last one we're going to look at is against Durak Rask. So Durak Rask's ability of destroying wounded units can get extremely irritating. Let's take a look at how I deal with that. This time I decided to keep all the cards. I keep telling myself that if I draw the raven I want to keep it in my hand so I have it when I need it. I've got Duke Mordecai, and hopefully he'll get played in a couple of turns. And most importantly, I have Recon Claw. And Duke Mordecai should be able to get into play before Endurance starts hitting me in the 6 energy turn. So Recon Claw goes down straight away, and I go ahead and start bashing uh, Durak Rask, because I've got a higher attack than him right now. That's good, he's played Lictisia Divinatus, so he's unlikely to play a unit. Nope, he plays a unit, damn. And he goes and attacks me. Just kind of hoping for a rule of fear, but in the absence of that, I'll just settle for uh, putting down a healing unit so I can start healing myself next turn. Next turn I'll be able to do something like a Curse of Foresight and heal, but no, now he's got a Jew back in play. That's annoying. I do really do not want to see be facing my own card, so I'm going to have to deal with that Jew back first. So to do that, I destroy the frontline unit. I play Curse of Foresight. Okay, that's starting to help. I've got punitive action, I've got another unit to play. And I use sabotage on Jubak so he no longer draws cards. And that's it. I'm going to save the technical servitors for when I can activate punitive action. So Jubak goes ahead and hits me. What comes up next? I get... Uh, okay, I'm going to bring in my Duke Mordecai. I'm going to give him flank, and I'm going to go ahead and hit that frontline unit. I'm also going to finish it off, and then uh, I can't heal myself at all. So now again, I'm falling quite behind on health, and he brings in first wave. Wow. Lots of frontline toughness over there. At least my Duke Mordecai is still alive. So now again, I'm 10 points behind on health, but this is where the first ace off my sleeve starts popping out. So first of all, I heal myself, so I'm only uh, 7 points behind. 
and now with four units on the board, I well five units on the board, I now drop my punitive action, wipe his board, and now I can start beating him down again, including with my warlord again. Now normally the technical servitors becomes a priority to remove, but uh, with Duke Mordecai on the board as well, he's got some other problems. So instead he's going to use Durak's ability to finish off Duke Mordecai. And that opens up options for me. And again, he's trying to draw more cards for himself, but that also gives more cards to me. I have a rule of fear, but it's kind of wasted on a little dude like that. So instead, I'm going to make the, uh, bring the predator in, give myself some extra health, and then I'm just going to take out his, uh, little, uh, medical dude. Otherwise, his medical dude could attack my predator, and then Durak's ability could finish it, but no, he's got a better idea. He uses vengeance on the predator. So that destroys the predator, which is such a shame. Okay, and he brings in his own healing guy. Okay, so this feels like a good time now for uh, some of the other cards to come to play. I make my uh, Reaper of Kaldrak cheaper. I then play Rule of Fear to get rid of his healing guy before you can do anything. I drop the Reaper of Kaldrak and make Durak Rask unable to attack, so the Reaper will survive till the next turn. Heal myself, and continue to bash into Durak. The end game's in sight. I've got the Raven ready to go here, except he puts down a front line guy, but that's, I think, still going to be okay. Oh, look at that. He puts down uh, Captain Uteoge, the healing guy, and now the healing begins. He destroys my technical servitor, and he gains plus two health. And the uh, Blight Grenade hits me. That's not terrible. Alright, so uh, my plan here is to destroy his front line unit and use the Raven to finish him off. Except, I forgot that when I destroy the frontline unit, he heals. Alright, so new plan. I'm still going to just bring the Raven in and bash into him. Because I don't think he can heal enough to uh, survive now. In fact, if he doesn't kill anything in the next turn, the Voss Predator damage will kill him. So he does damage to the Raven, and then he uses up C Captain Ugeoge. For some reason, on that guy instead of... Well, I think he realizes... Yeah, I don't know what he was trying to do. I think he was expecting some heals or something. So I use the uh, Predator to damage the frontline unit, use the Recon Claws to finish it off, and then lastly move in with the Raven to uh, win the match. Alright, so hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video. Um, remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and you'll keep getting uh, notifications when I publish new ones. And yeah, in Midnight Clad, have fun playing as Jago Savitar. Alright, bye guys.